Hi everyone, uh, my name is Matt Wallen and I'm an accredited exosphysiologist from Victoria and I'm here today in the fourth video of this series uh, to talk to you about how to stay fit and active during the COVID-19 pandemic. And from the outset, this video is going to be particularly directed towards those who of you have actually already received the transplant. No doubt for everyone, the last few weeks have been a complete whirlwind and have likely changed the way that you go about your day-to-day -day lives. Everyone is doing their absolute best to try and adapt to the current situation. However, it's still important to try and engage in regular physical activity within your new daily schedule. Certainly the majority of people understand the benefits of participating in regular physical activity. However, during times like these, maintaining a, a regular exercise routine um, is generally the first thing that actually goes. Unfortunately, this means people will actually become quite sedentary, um, which we know in general increases the risk of things like heart disease, diabetes, dementia, as well as certain types of cancers. Also, being socially isolated and cooped up for prolonged periods of time um, may also have a negative impact on your overall mental health. However, on the flip side, we know that being fit and active has a variety of benefits, including increasing your overall fitness level, increasing physical function, improving your muscle size and strength, as well as your bones, and maintaining um, good blood pressure and blood glucose control, as well as improving and assisting with improving your overall mental health. And based upon all these benefits, I would encourage everyone to stay as active as they can during this time. However, there's obviously a variety of factors that you should consider before jumping into your new exercise routine. First and foremost, it's incredibly important for you to stay as safe as you can during this time to limit any risk of exposure. You're likely taking a variety of different medications that actually suppress your immune system, which inherently actually increases the risk of you developing infections. So things like practicing you know, safe um, social distancing, staying at home where possible, as well as maintaining um, very good hand hygiene should really be at the forefront of your mind before even thinking about going outside to exercise. If in the instance that you've contracted COVID-19 and you're actually self-isolating or you're experiencing uh, symptoms that are similar, please contact your primary healthcare provider for further guidance um, and refrain from actually participating in exercise. Furthermore, if you, there's any odd symptoms uh, that you are unsure about, you're not, you're not quite sure what to do, it's important that you contact your doctor and also refrain from exercise until those problems have actually been resolved. There's also a few important things um, to consider, particularly if you've recently received a, a transplant prior to the COVID-19 pandemic as well, or if you haven't done any physical activity in quite a long time. This is you, I would highly recommend getting in contact with your GP or transplant team um, about this so that they can give you the tick of approval uh, before you commence any regular exercise regime. Although you might be used to having consultations via face-to-face, these healthcare providers are actually shifting towards things like video conferencing, telehealth, and other forms of contact. Nonetheless, no matter what modality is used, it's really important that you discuss your intentions with your healthcare team before starting exercise. When you look at the, the, the overall current physical activity guidelines, um, it's important to understand that doing any physical activity is better than doing no physical activity, and that the best physical activity is one that you'll engage with on a regular basis and make it part of your day-to-day -day life. For this video, the advice I'm going to provide is quite generic. However, exercise should be safe um, and individualized. So in the first instance, before starting any exercise, I'd recommend contacting an exercise professional like an accredited exercise physiologist or a physiotherapist who have both done advanced clinical training uh, in prescribing um, exercise. Even if you're unsure if you should start exercise, what you know what things you can safely perform as even if you need additional information uh, these allied health professionals will be able to direct your questions if you're worried about the risk of exposure both professions can actually deliver the majority of their services via telehealth so you can exercise in the comfort of your own home in general, uh, for those who have been engaging in res uh, regular physical activity for some time after your transplant, it's recommended that you're accumulating at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity on most days each week. 
And when I say moderate intensity physical activity, this is when you notice an increase in the rate of your breathing, but you're still able to hold a conversation, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to sing if someone was next to you. If you're currently working at home and short for time, you could even consider breaking up your day um, by doing two um, minute exercise snacks every 30 minutes, which over say an eight hour work day would actually accumulate to around about 32 minutes. However, if you're actually new to exercise or you, you, know, you haven't really done much recently, it's particularly important that you don't go too hard and that you should start at a level that is easily manageable and gradually build up over time towards the recommended levels. I often recommend people even starting a general light walk for five to 10 minutes a day, or even less if you can't actually maintain this, and gradually building up over a period of time from there. Similar to what I said before about exercise snacking, you may wanna consider dividing exercise bouts into smaller, more achievable time intervals and gradually accumulating exercise over the day. These suggestions are really to ensure that you are doing exercise safe, as well as to improve the likelihood that you'll engage with exercise over a longer period of time. Additionally, if you received your um, transplant just prior to the COVID-19 outbreak, it's important that you're following any activity restrictions that have been recommended by your transplant team. You should really be able to aim to accumulate exercises in as many ways as possible, like going for an early morning walk, for example, outside, or using equipment that you might even have at home that you might need to dust, dust the cobwebs off a little bit, like a stationary bike, a treadmill, or even going up and down stairs. You should consider incorporating things like muscle strengthening activities as well, like body weight exercises or exercises with a resistance element, such as using a dumbbell or resistance bands. Unfortunately, for the time being, working um, outside or doing exercise um, outside in groups, exercising at your local gym or studio, or using public outdoor gyms is currently not allowed. However, if you don't think you have the equipment um, at home and available, you can actually create your own equipment, like filling up one or two litre um, milk bottles, or even using unopened canned vegetables or packets of rice as dumbbells. You can actually have a brilliant workout just by using minimal equipment or even just your own body weight. To assist with this, there's a variety of free resources available from the Refit uh, for Life website that's endorsed by the World Transplant uh, Games Federation and specifically designed uh, for transplant recipients, as well as the Exercise Right website, which is a repository of simple home-based workouts performed by accredited exercise physiologists that you can watch and exercise with. Regardless or if you're exercising at home or outside, please ensure that you're adhering to your state's social distancing rules, as well as maintaining high levels of hand hygiene and washing your hands regularly and properly cleaning your workout equipment. Furthermore, it's important to understand that exercise will inherently increase your heart rate and it will make you shorter breath and you may feel a slight little burn in your muscles and this is normal. However, if you do find that you are exercising and you notice that your chest, you're getting chest pain, excessive amounts of shortness of breath, as well as lightheadedness and potentially dizziness, it's important that you do stop exercising and immediately seek medical care. Additionally, if you know that you have high blood pressure or you have diabetes, which is common after transplant, ensure that you monitor this before and after you have a workout as exercise can make these levels of, of your blood pressure and your blood glucose fluctuate. Finally, if you start exercise, it's critical that you continue with your normal medication routine. Again, if you're unsure about anything to do with exercise, please contact an exercise professional or if it's medically related, please contact your primary care physician or your transplant team. In summary, being in isolation doesn't mean you actually have to be inactive. There's a lot of physical um, health benefits as well as mental health benefits from participating in regular physical activity. And it can be done in a variety of ways, even at home. Doing some physical activity is better than doing no physical activity. And you should pick an exercise that is safe, one that you will enjoy and perform regularly. If you're unsure about starting exercise or have any exercise related questions, it's also really important that you contact an exercise professional um, who are trained to prescribe exercise in a way that is both safe and individualized. Hopefully the things that I've discussed today are helpful for you, but for now, stay safe and take care.